What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today we're going to be checking out a new alpha, and it's called Escape from Tarkov, and it's basically in the vein of Stalker, so if you're familiar with that game, you should fit right in. It is definitely a very PC-centric game, so we will be seeing a game that is from the ground up built for gaming PCs, which is super exciting, and it's in the very early stages, so we get to see where the current status of the development of the game is and how it performs on various hardware and hopefully also help them out in determining what they need to work on for improvements. We're going to be checking out not only the difference between AMD and Nvidia GPUs but we're also going to be checking out the difference between Ryzen and Skylake performance as well as the percent change in frame rate you can gain from individual settings that the game does offer within its settings menu. So stick around. So let's talk about the primary test bench that we're going to be using for testing the GPUs and later on down the line you'll see why this test bench was used over the other one. So to start things off like I said we're going to be using a 7700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz mated to an MSI gaming M3Z270 motherboard with 16 gigabytes of Kingston Savage 2400 megahertz RAM and an M.2 SATA SSD with 256 gigabytes of storage and it will all be powered by a 850 watt gold rated power supply from Thermaltake. The benchmark run itself is actually quite a bit more difficult with this game because it is running on a clock or a timer. Fortunately there is an option in the game to play in offline mode and select start with a random time which doesn't appear to work for me. At least my game will start with a random time but once I've started that game no matter what the time just rolls on that map and that kind of did cause some issues meaning that since I've gotten the alpha key I've had to spend a lot of time or I guess a lot of days in testing to try to hit the exact same time setting within the game for each test meaning that every single GPU here pretty much had to be tested every single day to stay concurrent now because of that because of the time and how it relates I was able to fortunately get a couple GPUs in in a test session but I did have to have multiple multiple test sessions for the all of these benchmarks which is quite frustrating. The map that I did use was the customs map which is the top one and you can click on that and then like I said test in offline mode and then load into the map and then I would run from the starting point over to the truck and start there then I would walk down turn left through the gate and walk down there and there's a particular section where there is a light on the building and it shines down onto some textures on the ground and it does seem to have some particular issues that will cause frame rates to go below and it looks like this is ray issues because what you end up having is the rays from the light on the building and on the other side the rays from the sun and at that particular time of day with those two in place you can really put a big stress on the GPU. So what I would do is walk up there and do a couple circles until the 60 second benchmark was done and that gave me a pretty good idea of overall performance as well as getting in some good 1% lows. The settings for comparing all of the equipment or all of the hardware that we used is is for the game is just going to be the default ultra settings. This makes it very easy because then all you have to do is change one slider to mimic the settings that I pick and then go through them. This game does have quite a few different settings that you can already change in the alpha with a couple grayed out that it looks like you'll be able to change once we get further into development. But in case you're trying to improve frame rate right now for the alpha, let's talk about some of the available settings that will help you improve your frame rate. So the chart that's going to be coming up is going to be the percent change in FPS by setting and what this means is that if you for example have the game running right now and you're running at 50 frames per second you're going to want to find the setting or settings that add up to a 20% change in FPS to reach 60 frames per second. That aside let's go ahead and take a look at the chart. Starting out with the biggest change in frame rate that you can gain it's going to be anisotropic filtering with a 7.9% change in FPS and right below that we have contact SSAO 
CEO, which is something new that I haven't really seen before. And you will get a 6.9% change in FPS with this one. Texture quality is going to give you about a 6.4% change, while object LOD quality is going to be giving you a 5.3% change. SSAO is going to be a 3.9% change. And then finally, shadow quality is surprisingly only a 3.6% change here. And the reason I say surprisingly is usually shadow quality will hit the frame rate a little bit more. And I initially thought because of the rays, like I was talking about earlier, that this could be one of the issues. But I think that the what you'll see here is that issue of the GPU utilization and CPU utilization caused by the rays is probably going to be something more along the lines of a global illumination or something. That aside, let's talk about the benchmarks. The benchmarks are going to be in 1080p Ultra, like I stated before, and we're going to start with the worst performing GPU and move our way up. And so starting out with the power color RX 462 gigabyte, we had a minimum FPS of 28 with an average of 32.1 and a max of 37, which does make this pretty play with very few settings tweaks to be above 30 FPS on a $100 card. The GTX 1050 does perform quite a bit better in that same category of GPU with a minimum of 43, an average of 48.7, and a max of 55. Now, its bigger brother, the 1050 Ti, had a minimum of 46 with an average of 52.92 and a max of 61. Finally, we can get into a 60 FPS average range with the Sapphire Fire RX 474 gigabyte with a minimum FPS of 56, an average of 62.15, and a max of 69. Bumping up to its bigger brother, the MSI RX 480 Gaming X Edition, we had a minimum FPS of 68 with an average of 75.57 and a max of 84. It does, however, get beat out by the little 1060, the three gigabyte here, which had a minimum of 72 FPS with an average of 81.48 and a max of 91. Its bigger brother, the 1066 gigabyte, had a minimum FPS of 81 with an average of 92.8 and a max of 107. Obviously, this game appears to be being developed at least on NVIDIA hardware to me just because of what we're seeing here. Now, that doesn't mean that the end result of Escape from Tarkov isn't going to get improvements on the AMD side because what we will see are some specific driver releases for this game in the future from both AMD and Nvidia and then we'll have to reassess what we get there but this is an overall performance of the alpha and I think it does have some good information for you guys there if you're interested but GPUs aside there is a bigger issue that we need to address and that's going to be the Ryzen versus the Skylake performance for Escape from Tarkov alpha and I've sent these kind of numbers off and some clips I'm going to show you guys some clips and exactly what's going on here but just right off the bat this is going to be using a GTX 1080 Ti at 1080p with the ultra preset which means that we are putting uh, the we are putting the stress on the CPU over the GPU as we're probably not GPU bound especially in this title with a 1080 Ti so the 7700K, which is what we tested all these GPUs on here for the previous benchmarks, had a minimum FPS of 116 with an average of 142.03 and a max of 178. Now you can already tell here that there are some optimizations that need to be done for this title and I think that's also why they do have the checkbox for limit the game to 60 FPS because this is probably what they're experiencing on higher end hardware. But if we bump down to the 1800x something very odd begins to appear where we have a minimum fps of 71 an average of 84.87 and a max of 111 to give you guys an idea on the 7700k we're getting the same frame rates with a gtx 1063 gigabyte as we are with a 1080 ti on an 1800x so, of course, I couldn't just put these numbers out there and do additional research to kind of get an idea of why this is happening or what's causing it. Do you remember how I said in the benchmark we're going through and we find that section where we're getting two light rays and that's really, really demanding? Well, apparently that's very, I guess, CPU dependent here. And I can show this or demonstrate this on a particular portion in the map here in this video that you will see where I basically pulled up the CPU usage 
footage because I was curious about that. And then also pulled up the fraps counter just because that's a quick way to see and then went ahead and capped the video for you guys. But if we're just looking at the ground in this video, for example, and then we look up to where we start to see the rays coming out of the out of the windows at the top of left, we see a huge dive. When you're looking at the ground, we're seeing those numbers that the 1080 Ti were getting, right? And then when we look up, we start seeing those numbers that we were getting on the uh, 1800X. And excuse me, I meant the 7700K earlier. There is something going on with the global illumin illumination and I haven't, there's no real option to go ahead and turn this off. I did go through the options menu and turn off every setting and save and then do that again and restarted the game, did all that multiple times to see if any particular setting would change those results and nothing did. So this is definitely an issue with the Ryzen system at this point and some optimizations that need to be done with the X370 and uh, I guess just the AM for platform in general. In conclusion, if you're looking at playing the alpha, obviously you're gonna to wanna to go with a blue-green combo between Intel and Nvidia and probably pick up just, I mean, honestly, you could just get away with a, just the GTX 1063 gigabyte and have a pretty good experience with Escape from Tarkov. However, I did just wanna mention that, yeah, this is by far, by far, the worst performing title I have tested on Ryzen and I'm not, exactly exactly sure why and I hope that we can figure it out as soon as I get word back from the developers I will remake a video if that actually happens and I get some word back from them and we'll kind of start to work through this and see if we can improve performance for the AM4 platform if you enjoyed the video be sure to like comment and subscribe I definitely like comments because I do make these videos to have discussions about video games, video game hardware, and just the PC Master Race in general. Wrapping things up, don't forget to check out my Patreon where all of these benchmarks went up yesterday or earlier this week, and you were able to check them out before it went live on my YouTube channel. It only costs a dollar to unlock all of the benchmark charts early, and so head on over there at patreon.com slash son of a tech. And until next time, I'll see you next Tuesday.